this uh, service, praise the Lord, in the month of February, and God is set to perfect all that concerned you. Are you saying amen this morning? Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 5. I'd like to read verse 24. Genesis 5, verse 24. Genesis 5, verse 24. The Bible speaking says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I'll be bringing us one caption here as understanding the covenant work. Say after me, say understanding the covenant work. Praise the Lord. By way of starting, I'd like you and I to understand this morning that the earth where we are occupying today is a place that covenant men and women had walked through this earth. They have walked through the face of the earth with results here and there that cannot be denied. They all have undeniable results. And today we are talking about quite a lot of them. A good example is a man called Enoch that we are looking at this morning here. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Look at the word walk. I like to understand that there's a difference between hopping and walking. See, after me, there's a difference between hopping and walking. Now, look at me, everybody. When I do like this, what am I doing? Talk to me. Now, what am I doing now? Talk to me. Good. There are two different things. Never you confuse when you are hopping and you assume that you are walking. Enoch did not hop with God. Enoch walked with God. And the Bible says that he was not because God took him. What does it mean with the time God took him? It simply means that God moved him from the lower realms of life to the higher place of life. Can I say this to everybody this morning? We all know that we are in hard times. Is that true? We are in hard times. But do you agree with me? We are in hard times, but there are people who are still blessed in this season. Like I said, the earth that we are into, covenant fathers have walked through the earth. Names like Enoch, names like Noah, names like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, we have all those wonderful names. If you come down to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible speaking from verse 32, it said for what shall we more say for time shall fail us to talk about, uh, about something, about Rahab, about Jephthah, Hebrews 11 32. If you read it down through verse 36, uh, the Bible says who through faith did what? They subdue kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. So the promises were kept somewhere, but they were able to obtain them. I'd like you to position yourself in this service this morning here. Because in the course of this meeting, some veils will drop off your eyes. You heard me this morning. Veils will drop for you to begin to understand in order to obtain they obtain, and the Bible says all of this is happening for our examples and for our admonition. We are looking at understanding the covenant work. What is a covenant? What is a covenant? Now look at this. Literally, 
a covenant in the Bible simply means an agreement between God and his people. When we sing song like he's a covenant keeping God, we are simply saying that he's a God of covenant. Is that true? Praise the Lord. He's a God of covenant. And so a covenant literally means an agreement between God and his people. In which God makes promises to his people and usually required certain conduct. Very important. God makes promises to his people and usually requires certain conduct from them. So for the promises that God has made, for you to be able to obtain these promises, there are certain conducts that is required of you. Can somebody say certain conduct? Praise the Lord. Like I said in the Old Testament, God made agreement with Noah, Abraham, with Moses. He made agreement. There are promises that God made. And for them to be able to obtain this promises, an agreement between God and Abraham and God say you know what if only you are going to leave where you are right now which could be your comfort zone where it's full of doubt and unbelief and God says switch over your location to a land I will show to you in that place I will make your name great hallelujah whosoever blesses you shall be blessed and whosoever cursed you what will happen to them he says shall be cursed so, like I said, usually it requires certain conduct. Now, hear this. For a covenant to be what it is, there are certain conduct that has to be observed. Now, for Enoch, what was the conduct that Enoch observed? Praise the Lord. We are told down there from our text again. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not. What happened? For God took him. Now, what was the conduct that we saw in the case of Enoch? Give me Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Hebrews 11, 5. There, there must be a conduct. There is a conduct that you must observe in order for the covenant to work for you. Look at Hebrews 11, 5. Can we read together? One to go. By faith, Enoch. So stop there. We talk of conduct. So if you look at the case of Enoch, the conduct that Enoch observed that gave him access to the blessing, that gave him access to the promises, was faith. Can someone say faith? In Genesis, Enoch walked with God. Is that true? But that text here is not well defined. Enoch walked with God. How did he walk with God? The answer is by faith. You didn't get me this morning. How did Enoch walk with God? So it doesn't matter the situation that we have found ourselves. It doesn't matter the economic crisis, economic meltdown. It doesn't matter the hard times. I said, this earth where we are today, great patriots have walked through this earth, and the Bible says they all have testimonies. They subdue kingdoms. They obtain promises. The same way it happened for them, it's going to happen for you and I. Because God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Enoch walk with God. How did he walk with God? By faith. Talk to me this morning here. We have a generation today that we have come out of faith. A generation today that prefer to walk by sight. Second Corinthians in chapter 5 in verse 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. Leave that scripture there in Hebrews please. 11 verse 5. And by faith Enoch did what? Enoch, by faith, Enoch was translated. What does it mean to translate? Enoch changed position. Enoch changed levels. So levels are changeable. Position 
are changeable. How do I do it? By faith. What is faith? Hebrews, leave that scripture please. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not yet seen. Verse 2 says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. So in the midst of crisis, by faith we can obtain. said I see you obtaining good report after this service in the great name of Jesus no more evil report no more negativity no more bad news no more regret no more disappointment no more backwardness you're not saying amen this morning you see maybe I'm not talking to you but the people I'm speaking with they can connect with me this morning by faith Enoch was translated moved from one level to the other to be translated we all know that Enoch was somebody who did not die the Bible says he was translated he was moved from the lower realms of life to the higher place of life so in this service this morning someone can change position someone is about to change position someone is about to change level someone is about to experience a shift it will happen for you suddenly you know when I hear people say it happens suddenly no it's by faith where faith moves then things will begin to move Faith is a substance. And when you say something is a substance, it means that thing is handleable. Are you with me this morning? If you say faith is a substance, it means faith is touchable. If you say faith is a substance, it means faith is seeable. It may not be with the physical eyes, but with the eyes of the spirit. In Ephesians, you know, chapter uh, uh, 6, verse, verse 16, get about 6.16, Ephesians, can, can we have an Ephesians 6.16? Let me see. Ephesians 6.16. Studio. Above all, taking what? The shield. Now I say faith is handleable. It's touchable. It, I'm, I'm holding a microphone here. Is that true? So the same way I'm holding this microphone, you can hold faith. Faith is a shield. A shield means a defensive weapon. You use it to defend. When the enemy shall come like a flood, Faith is here to protect. When you are quoting scriptures, you quote it by faith. You can see some things that is pulling people down, but you are holding the shield of faith. It is by faith you are holding it. Somehow the devil wants to bring fear. Don't get me wrong that when you are walking with God does not mean that fear will not come. At times the enemy wants to come because when he sees you, Peter, trying to walk on water, you are trying to do what no man has ever done before. Fear will want to show her ugly face. But as long as your eyes are fixed on Jesus, the enemy can do all he knows best to do. My Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. I see God keeping you from falling. I see God protecting your family. I see God protecting the wives of your hand. You are not saying amen this morning here. Back to that Hebrews again, 11 verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated he was moved from where he used to be before to the next level by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found why because God who wherever faith is God is wherever faith is found God is present he said because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. The same Hebrews 11 verse 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, 
and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is set to reward someone in this service this morning here. I said, God is going to reward someone. Uh, uh, who is the person that God is going to reward? Uh, my Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, uh, in chapter 18, in verse 8, uh, it says, When the Son of Man shall come to the earth, uh, shall he find faith? Uh, so if God can find faith on this mountain this morning, uh, he uh, will move someone. Uh, if God can find faith in your heart, uh, if God can find faith in your life this morning, uh, get set for a translation. Uh, get set for a shift, uh, get set for breakthrough, uh, get set for favor, uh, get set for blessing, uh, get set for plenty. Uh, am I talking to you this morning here uh, in the mighty name of Jesus? Glory to God. I say glory to God. The conduct for Enoch's translation, like I said, was that he walked with God until God was pleased. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Make sure that your walk here on earth is not to please men, but it's to please God. Men can say, well done. Men can clap for you. But if God is not clapping for you, forget it. I heard something recently. A man of God, an old man of God, in his 80s was preaching. And he said something about that there's a difference between teaching and preaching. He said, when a man of God is teaching, you only inform the people. They are informed. Is that true? They get information. They are inspired. But he said, when a man of God is preaching, he moves the people. Preaching moves the people. Glory to God. Especially when it gets so deep. Especially when it's so, you, you, you know, you know fiery. It moves the people. For teaching, they can clap their hands and just be relaxed. But when it gets to preaching, just like Peter was preaching in Acts chapter 2, and the Bible says, and they were preach in their heart. That is what preaching does. It brings men and women to their knees. It brings them to a point uh, of sober reflection. Uh, it makes them to begin to weigh their life. Uh, am I serving God or I am doing religion? Uh, we have quite a lot this morning. It's Sunday morning. Uh, a lot of people have gone out uh, to different locations. Uh, so many decide to go for religion. Some want to go and show uh, the new dress that they saw. Uh, some want to show the new hairstyle that they got. Uh, some want to show the new resorts they bought. Uh, some bought new cars. Uh, I tell you there are different reasons why people go to church on Sunday uh, but you only find few uh, who came with their heart uh, and say Lord I'm here again for an encounter uh, I want to see your face oh God uh, not your head uh, some are asking God uh, what do you have for us today uh, bread and butter uh, but some other uh, the few remnant uh, they say oh God uh, I want to see your face uh, I want to know you uh, I want to experience you uh, Paul was a lawyer but the Bible says he's must be praying uh, that I may know him uh, and the power of his resurrection. Uh, may that be the story of someone right now. Uh, because when you get to this dimension, uh, then the Holy Ghost begins to pierce your heart, uh, begins to pierce your spirit. Uh, and in case you came into such meeting weak or sick, uh, healing takes place on her own accord. Uh, you don't need a pastor to come lay hands on you. Uh, you can be sitting anywhere, uh, but as long as your heart uh, is right. What happened? Uh, the healing power of God will locate you. Uh, the Bible says he sent forth this word uh, and the word uh, located uh, and healed them from all of their destruction. Uh, whatever uh, that someone needed to be healed of this morning, uh, may the power of God touch you by faith. Uh, may the hand of God touch you by faith. Uh, touch your family by faith. Uh, touch your home by faith. Touch that business. Uh, touch your career. Uh, those areas where you have not discussed with anyone I see the healing power of God coming your way right now. The Bible says uh, that it's a healing. Uh, it said the heal shall the son of righteousness uh, arise uh, with the healings uh, in his wings. Uh, take healing this morning uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Enoch walk. Walk. W-A-L-K. Walk. What am I doing now? Talk to me. What am I doing? Church. I'm walking. Praise the Lord. Enoch 
walk with God, he was Lord because the Lord took him. Hear this, to walk with God is to be in agreement with God. Talk to me. To walk with God is to be what? In agreement with him. So when the Bible says Enoch walked with God, he was simply saying that Enoch was in agreement with God. To walk with God simply means to walk by faith. Have you ever seen God before? Talk to me. Even as a pastor, I've never seen God before, but I know God. How do I know God? I know he's a good God. I know that he's not a man that he should lie. How do I know God? Glory to God. He's my creator. How do I know him? Because I possess his spirit in me. I can differentiate between the spirit of the devil and the spirit of God. How do I know that? Every good and every perfect gift coming from above. If it is not good, it's not God. You didn't get me this morning. So when the sickness, then th that's not God. I've seen people say, God, when they are sick, they say, God is teaching me some lesson. God doesn't teach, it, teach people lesson through sickness. The Bible said that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make the wise unto salvation. All scriptures, they are given by the inspiration of the Lord and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for correction unto righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Praise the Lord. So when God wants to teach you a lesson, he uses his word to teach you. God doesn't use sickness. Job, God was not responsible to the sickness of Job. Who was responsible? Talk to me this morning. Do I have Bible student here? Who was responsible? The devil, Satan was responsible. Please tell us to, to sit up there. Amen. Satan was responsible. And Job had an understanding. It wasn't God. Job had an understanding. A stick out of the church, you can put it anywhere, put it in your house, but your heart is not even in the church where you go to. Look at this. It will be very wrong for you to say you are walking with God and you select what to obey. We have quite a lot of believers today right now that the internet has become their pastor. I mean, the social media is not, is not, is not their pastor. An unbeliever can just bring something up. Look, get to a point that you are matured. Say matured. You should be a mature believer. Peter said, as new babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God, that ye may grow. Is that true? Desire. There's a, there's, there's a dimension of the world that is like, Milk, say milk. There's a dimension of the world that is like meats. There's a level your baby will start rejecting the, the meat you are giving him or her. He sees you eating something that has color, but every time it's white, 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 you are giving her. One day you see her pushing the thing away from her mouth. I want the one that you are eating. Are you hearing me? And there are some children who are not willing. They prefer bre breast milk. And if the mother is sensitive, it says two years at two. She begins to win the baby. To win simply means to deny you of breast milk. Some children at times you see them, they, they, they fall sick. Because they've been used to breast, breast milk. And the mom said, no, it's time for you to move. Some of you will need to win you. Some people need, need to be win. Because your spiritual life is something that you need to be win in order to grow. One, two weeks, the baby will just mash it somehow. You feel for the baby. Is it fever? Is it teeth? No, it's breast milk. The mother say, yes, I know it's not easy, but you need to, to grow. You need to grow. And all of a sudden, after two weeks, she's used to this other one. Praise the Lord. There's a level of strong meat. There's a level of meat. There's a level of bone in the world. When they are pampering you, always, it shows you are seeing the level of meek. You did wrong. Instead of to correct you, they are pampering you. Will you grow? Such person will never grow. But when they correct you with the right hand and use the left hand to draw you, glory to God, you need to accept it. It is only somebody who loves you that wants to correct you. 
Some other person say, well, which one is my own? Anything you do is your own. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I said, praise the Lord. So to walk with God is simply to please God. The essence of walking with God is to please Him. He is a God of covenant. My Bible said, my covenant will I not break, neither will I alter. The things which is come out of my mouth, the word alter means God cannot change his word. So if God has said to you, you shall be the head and not the tail, God is not playing. God meant it. But for that scripture to become a reality, then there are some requirements, some conduct. An example of the conduct is you walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. <laughs> we walk by faith and not by sight. You must embrace righteousness. Can someone say righteousness? The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. But what? Sin is a to any man. Embrace righteousness. Embrace holiness. He said, without holiness, he said, no man can see God. You understand that language? So you can, you can be, see be in church, but there's no encounter. You see religion everywhere, but no encounter. What God wants is that as the service is going on, he's dealing with everybody. He's dealing with you. Amen. You mind your business. You are there. God is dealing with you. That is what the prophecy of Jewel chapter 2 says from verse 1 down to verse 12. He said, blow ye the trumpet in Zion, for the day of the Lord is not harm, a day of gloominess. He went further in verse 2, it's a day of uh, darkness, and he went further. Can we, Joel 2, can we have Joel 2, please? Joel 2 from verses 2, let me have verse 2 there. Joel 2 verse 2. Look at it. Joel 2 verse 2. He said, a fire devoured before them, and behind them, what? A flame bonnet. The land is as the garden of Eden. Before them, and behind them, a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. When God is dealing with you, in front of you will look like the garden of Eden. You didn't get me this morning? Eden means a garden of influence and affluence. Where nothing is missing and nothing is lacking. Next verse. Next verse. He said, their appearance. Ah. When Moses saw God, he came back. The children of Israel could not look at his face. Because of the glory was so heavy. How many of you desire that? Are you not tired with, even you, you don't even trust yourself. You don't even trust you. You are even, you're not even afraid of yourself. You, you. And you want somebody to be afraid of you. Have you heard this, like, this English before? Have you heard this English before? You are not afraid of yourself. And you want somebody, one small demon to be afraid of you. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. They can be famine. They can be scarcity. But these sets of people who have encountered God, they shall run. They will not crawl. They shall run. I said they shall run. Run in your business. Look at it. Next verse. He said like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap. Ah, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. You who say you are a weakling. God say I should say to you this morning. You are a strong people. Come and say I'm stronger. Say I'm stronger. My my business is stronger. My family is stronger. I'm not hearing you this morning here. Set in battle array before their face. The people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Next verse here. It said, and they shall run. Like what? Who are you this morning? 
These are mighty men and women. They shall roll like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone where. Ah, stop envying people. They may be building house last week. Don't envy. Thank God for what is happening for them. Your own is coming. I say your own is coming. Because the Bible says everyone shall roll on this track. So anyone who is progressing today is progressing on his track, not on your track. And when it is your turn, things will turn around. No one will take what belongs to you. No one will take your blessing. Come on, person lies to you. Say, no one takes my blessing. No one will take my money. No one will take my contract. No one will take the job. No one will take my promotion. No one will take my husband. No one will take my wife. No one will take my children. Come on, shine at all, see That is the word of Lord for somebody. Shall climb like mighty men, everyone in his ways, and they shall not break their rank. Hallelujah. The covenant work will help you. When you are walking by faith, you don't jealous anybody. You don't jealous anybody. You just know that you are next in line. Because everything in this kingdom is by faith. Look at it. In Romans 10 verse 10, the Bible says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, for with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But with the heart man believeth. So there must be a believing before you, there can be a declaration. Watch this, watch this. How many of you know that in a church where they said, 2024, millionaires are rising in this church. How many will say amen? Everybody. But how many of you know that not everybody has the capacity to become millionaires? No matter how the pastor pray. That's why you will be surprised that in a crusade of where you see multitude, only few individuals will have testimony. Some just say, let me go and see that pastor. I hear say they come. Uh, no go go. So they, they've seen the pastor. I, I've seen him. Oh. I've seen him. Amen. But there's one other person who came with hunger. One person came and said, Oh Lord, I will not leave you unless you bless me. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody this morning here? Are you getting something this morning? Praise the Lord. He's a God of covenant. Everything in this book is settled. God is waiting for you to play your own part. And one of the key words I'm saying this morning is faith. For by faith, Enoch walked with God. How did he walk with God? He walked by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing. Faith is agreeing. Faith is to be in agreement with God. Faith is hearing. Whosoever heareth these saints of mine and doeth them shall be likened to as a wise man. Praise the Lord. You are hearing. You are doing. That is faith. We walk by faith. And not by sight. Now I'm going somewhere. I said when you hear a prophetic word. Everybody in church can scream amen. But only few that have capacity. Can somebody say capacity? Capacity here talks about the container. Do you have the heart? Do you have the heart for greatness? If you don't have the heart to build a skyscraper. You don't even start the foundation. The foundation for a skyscraper is not one shot there. Are you hearing me now? They dig deep. The deeper you go, the, tall, the, the higher the building will look like. But when you hear anybody telling the engineer, just two shove it, two shove it, uh, two shove it, I don't want to waste material. You should know that it's one bungalow he wants to put there. But anyone that has a skyscraper vision or dream must first of all be thinking of what? A skyscraper foundation and it must be deep it must be deep so we're talking of capacity everything in the kingdom that we talk of faith is the capacity faith there is capacity are you with me this morning glory to God there is more faith oh. there is weak faith there is big faith there is great faith but the key word is that God gave each and every one of us capacity in measure Praise the Lord. 
That is why when you see somebody who is struggling to serve God, it shows that there, there is no revelation yet. Are you hearing me now? I have learned this few years in ministry, my 26, 27 years in full-time ministry, I have learned that there's no how you encourage somebody to serve God. It won't work. Whether it's money you give, you buy clothes. When we started church, there's somebody we pay house rent for. 2010, we pay house rent. I don't know him. He's just a brother in the church. You know him. I paid house for one by Cecilia. We paid a room for him. Church account was 67,000. We spent around 59,000 plus drink money and to give lawyer. 59,000. They gave me the receipt. I put it in his hand. He said, thank you, sir. After one month or so, he got a job at Avion, driving the admin manager, also personal manager. We're paying him 50,000. And his mentality changed. The next thing you see this young man, now, every time you see, you see a bottle of pure water, of, uh, a bottle of water. Salary 50,000. His bottle of water is drinking now. To see him in service became a problem. You call him and say, Daddy, you know, Daddy, you know, you know, you know, you know. To cut the long story short today, all those things, he's, he's hustling somewhere in town now. Praise the Lord. People who have encountered God, you don't encourage them. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't encourage them. The zeal comes out in them. The zeal to work with God. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Look at this. Look at me. Every trade business or every business has what we call trade secret. Is that true? Every trade has trade secret. Amen. Likewise, in the kingdom, we have what we call kingdom secrets. Covenant secrets. Let me give you an example. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, 29, 29 says, The secret things belongs to God, but that which is revealed to us belongs to us and to our children. The secret things belongs to God. So God is a God of secret. God has secrets. God's secret is not for anybody. In Mark chapter 4, in verse 11, the Bible says, For unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Say mysteries. The secret of the kingdom. But those who are without, all these things, they are done in parables. The secret things belong to God. But God revealed some of this secret to some of us. Those of us who are in the covenant. Are you hearing me? Those who are walking with God. You will never be stranded. Because there are some things God will begin to reveal to you. In your businesses, something wants to become scarce. God can just speak to you and say, go and buy those things. Amen. Those who are into spend business, for instance. Maybe before now, somebody got, before spent the price increased to 13,000 or thereabout, God may have just spoken to some covenant sons and daughters, uh, go and get 200 bags of cement, go and get 300 bags. And as soon as they just packed the bag, the price of cement skyrocketed. Now tell me, you bought it for 7,000 and now it's 13,500 or 14,000. Is that not good business? That is the advantage of hearing the voice of God. You, you, you will get a leading. And say, go and get this. And you take a step of faith. And what happened? You enter into breakthrough. Somebody who bought uh, 300 bags of cement at 7,000 some weeks ago. And now a bag is 13,500. Tell me. That's a, almost, almost 50% profit. Glory to God. Is that not good business? Every trade has trade secret. In the kingdom, we have what we call kingdom secret. The secret things belong to God, but that which is revealed belongs to us and to our children. So hear me. There are things God will reveal to you. And mind you, when you have a great dream, don't share it with little people. Write it. Write it down. Stop looking at me. When you have a great dream, a great vision, don't share it with little people. Small people. When I say little, I mean people that have small brain. Small brain, small sense. People that lack capacity. 
you don't share with them praise the lord so for anyone to be able to walk with god salvation is not enough when a man is in christ is a new creature yeah so many people who are born again are still frustrated why is it so because they thought that salvation is the end of the journey they are born again they didn't teach them to do anything again so their head is blocked everything bread and butter they are waiting unto the lord when god is simply saying i will give you a mouth and the wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to can say nor resist. Do you know that there are some people that God will cause you to cross contact with after this service? Some people who are in higher places. The reason why God will permit that is so that you should be able to sell yourself. Because if God opened doors for you to some people who are on top, let's assume you have access to the governor of the state and you sat with him. And then governor says, so what are you doing? What can I do for you? He said, ah, I'm hungry. I'm not eating, no. You know, this, this Nigeria, this river state, uh, food. Ah, ah, you, are with, you are with opportunities. And there's no brain. Come on. And now tell the cook, okay, they should put food for you on the table you ate. And you are going, they now give you one small envelope. I said, I'll come back next week. He said, no problem, when you're around. Next week, you appear again, and the governor says, oh, so how are you? How is everything? How is life with you? He said, ah, this country is hard, though. This you can see the way you are coming. You are so low. This time around, he may not even spend time with you again. He knows what you need. He just said, the PA, give him an envelope. He just 500. He just put it in your hand. <sighs> now, so this thing, they walk. <laughs> I will come back again next week. Now, the next week you are going, nobody will open the door for you. They say, who is that? He says, sir, that man that came. Those are, those are, what do we call these kind of people? Parasite. Say parasite. Say to your neighbor, you are not a parasite. Say you are not a liability. Say, I'm, I am an asset. I'm an asset. So after this service, there are people you are going to meet for the first time. Oh. It can be today, it can be tomorrow. Sell yourself. What, what, what do I say? let them hear capacity in you let them hear you saying something and then ask you what do you do you say well for now i'm doing nothing but i'm believing god i have these ideas you know to start this company i want to start this company glory to god now you can't be believing god and speaking in tongues here when you don't have a company so if you're looking at me you don't have you've not registered any company and every where they, they do prayer on Wednesday, you are there. One church, they do prayer on Friday night, you are there. You do on Saturday morning by 12 30, you are there. Everywhere you are there. Do you have a company you have registered? No. So they want to give you a contract. You see your nose to write on the corner. Instead of someone to give me money, let him give me ideas. Give me ideas. Register a company, go and keep it. When I came into ministry, when we came to Port Harcourt, 2010, one of the first things we did, we opened a church account, bought Naira and dollars. Can somebody say dollars? So it means that we're expecting that dollars will come. Where will it come from? We don't know. But we opened a large account. And I told you how that same 2011, how somebody, remember, paid, paid dollar into the church account? If there was no account, Praise the Lord. It is time to go ahead. Though. All those I receive it. I receive it. Shall be the head. I receive it. I receive it. In your family, you shall be the I, I receive it. But there is nothing you have done. The things you are receiving should match up with your preparation. When opportunity meets preparation, a miracle will take place. Opportunity comes every day, but we are not prepared for it. Some don't even recognize it. Somebody say, uh, What can you construct? We have a job to construct the road. He said, I've never done that kind of one before. So, what can you do? Mm, he said, Supply. Can supply higher rods, supply nail. Ah, ah. When the Bible says, And you can, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthened me. All I need to do is to put my brain at work. Praise the Lord. 
Is somebody getting anything today? Maybe what you, you need to do after this service is to go and register your company. You, you. If you, if you, you can be a student, have, have a company. Register a company. Are you hearing me? Register a company. Because the reason why contract have not come because there was no company. You'll be surprised as soon as you register a company. One opportunity will just come to, to supply some things. Amen. May the Lord grant you understanding. In Jesus' precious name we pray. As I prepare to close this morning, look at this. I say God responds is on the basis of your covenant work with him. God's response is on what? The basis of your covenant work with him. I want to give you a good example. In Genesis chapter 4, from verse 4 to verse 6, 7, there about. Genesis 4, 4 to 7. Cain and Abel, two brothers. Is that true? The Bible said two of them, they offered an offering to God. Is that true? The Bible said, but God accepted the offering of who? Abel. And rejected the offering of Cain. But the truth is that the two of them gave an offering. But one that had covenant sense knew that he had to give to God what has quality. And the Bible says, and God had respect. That is one place I have seen in scripture where the Bible says, and God respected Abel and his offering. I have seen where they say, God is no respecter of man. But there are some things you do that will make God to respect you. <laughs> he said, God is no respecter of, 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 of man. It's in scripture. But now, in Genesis chapter 4, if you read from verse 4 to verse 6, the Bible says, and to Abel, God had respect to Abel and to his offering. So the covenant work teaches me that there's a way I position myself that God will respect me. Heaven will respect me. It didn't say God will fear me. But God will respect me. How many of you know to all royals, when a king is walking, there's a way kings they walk. Is that true? There's a way kings walk. Look at me. Is that how kings will walk? In case you have not seen, just see me. That's just how kings walk. Amen. Now, how do servants, slaves they walk? You see them shaking everywhere. Praise the Lord. Now, as a king, even those who are walking, the cup bearer to a king, somebody like Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cup bearer in Babylon. But Nehemiah was a presidential cup bearer. There's a way you see somebody who is walking with the king, you will see that royalty had robbed on him. He doesn't treat you in God anyhow. There are some etiquettes, some basic etiquette. You're going for an interview and you put you in gum. And they say, What's your name? You mean my name? John. Right here, the, the man is writing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no way. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need people like this in this company. And they said, okay, drop your phone number. Go ahead. We'll send for you. As you are going, you say, you say what? We'll send for you. Go. As soon as you leave the place, they carry your paper trash into, into the, the, the trash can. Basic etiquette, zero. Courtesy, zero. Praise the Lord. The servant of a president, you can see them, they look, they look presidential. That is how it is. So, if you go to the presidency or you go to the government house, you are coming out in a different way. So, why is it that you came to Zion? For upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. You came sick, you are living more confused. It shows that there's no capacity in you to receive. Does it mean the pastor did not preach? He preached. Others receive you, no capacity. They say to say amen. It's, it's, it's a struggle. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, amen. Oh. And you're looking around, looking at people, the clothes that they wear. And your mind, your mind is not here. I know he, he, he borrowed that shoe. He borrowed the way I'm seeing that. The way he can't have money to buy. I can't have money. And the next thing you had in Jesus' name, you say, Amen. You didn't hear anything. You just follow the crowd. Amen. No capacity. Look at me. Capacity is what will bring you to the place of revelation. 
say capacity will bring me to the place of revelation revelation god cannot reveal things to people that lack capacity until you're a man of substance you have capacity then god can reveal some things how do i know that first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 says i have not seen he have not heard neither has he entered into the hearts of men the things which god has prepared for they that love him verse 10 says but these things are revealed to us by who the spirit of god for what they are revealed to us by who by the spirit of god can we have it there first corinthians 2 verse 10 these things are revealed to us by the spirit of god for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of God. Glory to God. Revealed by who? God can never reveal it to everybody. But to those people he trusts. I want to ask you a question this morning as I close. Can God trust you with money? You didn't answer me this morning. There are people that God can't trust. And even if God is giving you money, the money cannot pass some level. Because once you get to one million, they will misbehave. So is this 600, 500, 350? It's coming, and as it's coming, your head is still big. And God said, no, I've said it. Go when you pass one million, you misbehave. Are you hearing me now? Start giving people command, instruction, because of one million. Get out there, you are stupid. You are foolish. All this bastard. What is making him to talk that way? One million. And God said, your destiny, your destiny is covered in billions. But because he can't trust you, you don't have the capacity to handle it. So for now... Give me one scripture again. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. Let me have it. Galatians 4 verse 1. Galatians 4 verse 1 say. And here. 4 1. Okay. Now I say that the hair. As long as he is a child. What happened? Different nothing from a servant. Though he be lord of all. That is why I see a lot of Christians. They love God. They speak in tongues. But they are still poor. They are still afflicted. Why is it? Because their mentality is that of a child. They own everything. Their father owns it. But they are not aware of it. Look at the next verse. Next verse. Verse 2. Studio. Let's go. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. That until means until he's matured. Until he begins to build capacity. Then some things, they were pushing some things to use much more as the capacities increase. But when you lack capacity, there are some things your hands will never touch. You can go to prayer house, prayer mountains. There are things, I've said this here, I say God will never bring to you what is not your destiny. There are people you, some people will never meet you, t t t t till they die. Because the capacity is not there. And God is not a murderer. God don't want you to die before your time. So God will leave you with the people you have capacity with. Until, until the time appointed of the father. He owns all the things but he's still a child. But I like what Paul says. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I taught as a child. I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Are you said to put away things this morning? You're going to put away things this morning. Put away those, those low self-esteem in your life. Put it away. Stop talking with people when you live here. This is Nigeria. This country is finished. Some of you now when you leave church, some prodigal friends are waiting for you. As soon as you leave, they say, no, don't close. You say, hey, this country, oh, my friend. How, how you see the country? Is not, not so. <laughs> with all the faith you had in church, you pray now. Not so. You will not join those who are saying not so. You didn't hear me this morning here. I say you will not join those who want to kill your faith. Who wants to bring you down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Put that scripture as we close. Hebrews 11 verse 5. As I close this morning. Can we read together one to go. Let's remain upstanding. Let's stand everyone. I like everyone to read with me. I didn't say read in your mind. Read from your mouth. And let everybody hear you. Can we go one to go. Stop there. Stop there. After this service, no one here will be found in poverty. 
Why? Because God has translated you. I said after this service, no one will be found where sickness and disease is. Why? Because God has translated you. After this service, no one will fail again. Why? Because God has translated you. After this service, no one will be denied again. Why? Because God has translated you. After this service, no one will be disappointed. No one will see regret. Why? Because God has translated you. Now, turn that to prayers. If you caught something, if you can see what I'm seeing right now, it will show the way you are praying. It will show the way you are praying, everyone. Come and pray out your heart this morning. Pray out your heart this morning. And all say together. I pray that from today. I refuse to hop. I begin to walk with God. I walk with God. I walk with God. I walk with God. The covenant is a walk. Ashana Yagata is not a Game a tula brada a shayla no zika pa ta 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 ta. Are you praying this morning? Are you praying this morning, everybody? A shayla no zika. We shati ta to 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 ta la. La ti ta la ba da 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 ba da. A shayla no zeke ba gata no zeke ba gata ya da. A shaga ta ya gata ya. Raba ta ya gata le ba da. A shana ya gata le ba dogo sa gata ya ba da. Raba da ya gata ya gata ya. Raba da ya gata ya gata. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at me. The covenant is a walk. Say with me, walk. W A L K. A co the covenant is a walk. It's not a game. In the church, giving is not a game. It's a covenant. So when you lack understanding, you can give and it looks as if it's not working. So when you hear people preach and they tell you about tithing or they tell you about service, some tell you about going to church, even speaking in tongues, people are kicking against it. But because you are not strong, that is why the wind can easily blow you. It's a walk. And a walk is not the thing you do in one day. The covenant is a journey that we are in it. Until Jesus comes, we are in the covenant. We are walking together. Service is, is, is a walk. Now look at this. When I say walk, the covenant is a walk. Amen. He walk with God. It's not easy to walk with God. Walking with God entails energy. So apart from the fact that we say the covenant is a walk, W-A-L-K, the covenant is also a W-O-R-K. It's a walk. It's not easy. You gave and you are waiting for harvest to come. It has not come. You have served and they look and say, God say, you shall serve the Lord. He will bless your bread, bless your water. It takes sickness away from you. And headache is disturbing you. And you are asking questions about what is happening. It's a walk. In Acts of the Apostles 13, verse 3, the Bible says, Long time about day waiting. Long time about day waiting. Speaking boldly. Can we have it? Acts 13, verse 2. Is it 2 or 3? Acts 13, 3. Studio, please be fast, be fast. Huh? Acts 13, 3. Thirteen two. Let's see two. Okay, give me fourteen two. Fourteen two. Acts fourteen two. What is happening, young man? Give me three. Let's have three here. Fourteen three. Okay. Praise the Lord. Can we go? Stop there. Long, what is long? Long means long, it means it. Tay. You don't wait, don't take tay, 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 tay. long time. <laughs> is that what long is, Pastor? What is long in Ibu? Eh? Ogoloko. <laughs> I like this. Ogoloko. Hey, so Ogoloko, therefore, about day <laughs> speaking, but some of you. Why did this ogre logo? Your speaking will be weak. They say, What happened? They say, Father, I'm, I'm tired. I've been waiting. But this one, they were speaking boldly. From today, nothing will discourage your work with God. 
Nothing will discourage your walk with God. Nothing will discourage your walk with God. Come on, turn down to prayers right now. Nothing will discourage my walk with God. I know it's not easy. I know it is a walk. I know it is hard. But I'm going to keep it over. I will keep walking. I will keep walking. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. It doesn't matter how many times I've fallen. I will rise up again. Power to arise. Come on me this morning. My Satan knows yet. And Shanina knows yet. Come and pray it out this morning. Morning, uh. Someone prayed out this morning. Uh. Let the heaven hear your voice. Uh. I said, prayed out this morning. Shedano Zekepea, Latayada, a Shediano Zekebagatada. I receive grace, Lord. Uh. I give you thanks. Uh. I give you glory. Uh. I worship your name. Uh. Be thou exalted uh. in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands above your head. Father, this morning, grace is poured in this house to everyone on site and those online believing you for a next level encounter or experience receive it right now your faith is hereby activated you walk with god by faith and not by sight as you walk with god grace to please god take it right now i said take it right now my god shall be pleased with you beginning from this day and beyond and the reward for your faith will not pass you by be blessed in the city be blessed out of the city your name shall be called blessed in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I decree that there's a new season for you. Uh, a season of harvest, uh, a season to receive, uh, a season of remembrance, uh, a season of blessings, uh, a season of open doors, uh, a season of breakthroughs uh, for you and your family members uh, in your place of work. Uh, I see greatness imagine uh, God is opening a new chapter for you uh, this season by faith uh, in the great name of Jesus. Uh, take it if you believe it this morning uh, and so shall it be in Jesus mighty name we pray and amen glory to God bow on your heads this morning you're here you're not born again you want to meet with Jesus anyone here this morning and you're watching wherever I close the, the, the globe I'd like you to pray this prayer with me say Lord Jesus I come to you today I am a sinner wash me cleanse me with your blood to serve the living God take my names out in the book of death Write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises to serve the living God. In Jesus' name, and amen. Father, thank you for the life of those precious ones. The whole of sin and sickness is broken. Welcome you to the families of believers. Whatever you lay your hands upon to do from today, you shall excel. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed of the Lord. Jesus, name we pray. You are now a child of God. Look for a Bible-believing church. Close to you and identify yourself with them and God will bless you real good. In Jesus name we pray. Please let's be seated this morning. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The Bible speaking it says, God cannot be mocked. Whatever seed a man sows, that is what he's going to reap. He said, he that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption but he that sows the spirit of the spirit reap everlasting life he said god loves a cheerful giver today is the last sunday in the month of february praise the lord and it's our end of month thanksgiving service hallelujah you know we have a difference you have your offering and you have your end of the month thanksgiving seed praise the lord i say praise the lord and I want to believe that we are set for it, not to waste much of our time. We're going to uh, get all the, whatever offerings you have, your normal offering, your end of the month Thanksgiving seed, you just get them together. You have your tithe, you can walk out to the front here, or you're watching online. We have the information on the screen. You can follow suit and God will bless you. Can we rise on our feet, everybody? Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands to heaven, everybody. Can we just bless the Lord and say, Father, I thank you out of the abundance of what you gave to us. Huh? We have come with this token to say thank you. On this uh, Thanksgiving Day, we celebrate your faithfulness. Uh, we decree and declare that uh, uh, nothing dies around us, nothing finishes around us. Uh, in the great name of Jesus, all these hands that are lifted up, Lord, uh, none will go down. Uh, in the great name of Jesus, let the mystery behind 
tight in this day begin to speak in the life of your daughter and as many who are watching online in the great name of Jesus you are blessed of the Lord in Jesus mighty name we pray and amen let's come